Hi viewers, uh, it's me again. Uh, we have a new segment this week. And uh, this segment, it is going to be about Q's and A's. Like the questions uh, that people have been asking on my YouTube channel, on my inbox, and uh, today I think is the best time to answer them. So uh, I have a guest, a very good friend of mine. She's one of the people who have been on my support system. And uh, she'll be the one uh, asking the questions, and then I'll be answering in regards to what the questions uh, represent. So um, I'm introducing to you my lovely friend, Zuleka. Hello. Uh, please proceed and introduce yourself kindly. So uh, my name is Esther Zuleka Muli, and um, I've been to this friend for, for a while. And uh, I'm the owner of Sue Cakes, where, where she normally shoots her video. But today we decided we decided a different venue, at least to break the monotony. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, my dear. I have not mentioned that my dear friend Suleka is actually a certified uh, counselor, HIV counselor, and also she she deals with um testing and counseling and stuff. So you can imagine I'm dealing with somebody who is aware about whatever it entails. So. At one point when we are done, I will also hear her views and, uh, you know, like the challenges and what she's faced and things that she's been through as a counselor. So uh, as we start the segment, I think we should proceed with the questions or is there anything you, you, anything you need, you think you need to ask? Feel free, my dear. Thank you. So uh, let's, let's start with the questions your fans have asked. Yes, please. You're very good fans, <laughs> me being one of them. So the first question is, when you contracted HIV, yeah. your looks changed and you became a shell of your former self. Mm -hmm. How did this affect you? So I think first I should uh, rewind back to um, how I ended up testing in, rela in regards to the looks. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like this is now my former body before I became unwell. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine at this kind of uh, body, I lost a lot of weight. I lost my hair. And then my skin, I normally have a very smooth skin, but it okay. just vanished. I started having spots. I started having like wounds on my mouth so that would take time to kill. So I had this kind of um, uh, flus that would never go away. So, and then I started having a like persistent diarrhea. And then I asked myself like, uh, clearly there's a problem you know when you have a lot of infections and you don't understand what's going on so i decided let me just go and test and i went and tested mm -hmm. so when i tested positive um it really affected me okay um i was shocked as much as i was the one who took myself to the hospital to test mm -hmm. the scenarios whereby as much as you're going to test you want you have that thing of aki I hope I eat at an positive. positive. Mean, so not, not, yes. Mm. So I was thinking about that, but unfortunately, it tested positive. Mm -hmm. It was shocking, but I am one of those people who don't digest things immediately. Mm -hmm. It takes me time. Okay. So at that moment, there were those mixed reactions of like, what? So it's for real. So what I thought is real. Mm. But again, because I went with my small sister to test in the lab mm -hmm. and she was in shock being this like first i'm a firstborn okay secondly i'm this person who's always like comforting others mm. so i was like hey relax it has happened can you chill down mm -hmm. so at that point i didn't have those funny funny kind of mixed reactions okay but you see remember i went to test mm. as per my wanting Mm. Not like that I was sick and the doctor recommended. Oh, so I never that. went through counseling because it was a private hospital. Okay. I walked to the lab and asked for a test. Mm. So at this point, the lab techni technician has to tell me, like, now we need to go in. You see a doctor, you need to go for counseling. Mm -hmm. So he went and told the doctor, I have this patient who was tested positive. Mm. So the doctor called me and he told me, as much as these are your sisters, mm. uh, we have to do it privately because... Mm. This is a private matter. So I said it's okay, I allow them. So you know, those are the moments you ask questions and mm. you realize you get so overwhelmed and you start crying. I think that's the only time I cried, mm. seriously. I literally cri I cried my heart out because there are those thoughts of 
how did it happen mm. where did i go wrong exactly. how did i fail myself mm. how did i not take care of myself you know mm. and then there were those things of like most probably i would have take, i would have been careful mm. this shit wouldn't have happened but i thank god i had a good doctor that place was at mtongoni at the river mm. and he took me through we talked we talked he made me feel comfortable about it and then i he asked me like do you want to start your medication i was like yes and he gave me the air he introduced me to ARVs and um the septin the antibiotics but again you know you still remember i don't digest things very fast very fast yeah. so there's that time frame of digesting later later so my follower told me let's go to her place she will not allow me to go to my place you know there's that notion of the moment you test positive you will kill yourself and yeah, stuff yeah so i went to my sister's place they mm. cooked but i'll tell you for free i didn't eat you just think you can't even have an appetite mm. your whole life has just crumbled on your face yeah exactly you know you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow exactly it's like you're what starting you? all over mm. so i I just went I just went her house girl was like Susie and she says you're not going to eat and I told her no me I just want to go and rest first I went upstairs I got into one of the guest bedroom mm. I I was just relaxing there my sisters are so much in shock they don't even you know it has never happened yeah. how do they approach me they don't That's, know they don't know so they were just left there I remember at one point at 12 o'clock I just sat on my bed and I told God you know you know why I'm in this situation I mm. do not even know how to approach it I didn't know how to start about it so I just told him give me the strength to shoulder down to to soldier on mm. I don't know what is ahead of me but it's only the courage that you give me that will make me overcome what is ahead mm. so after two days I thought like if I rely on people's support Oh. The day I move back to my house, oh. then I'll relapse. Unajua umezoea ile kubembelezwa watu eh suzikula suzifanya au mtu dawa. Then what happens on your own? Because yeah, exactly. of that loneliness you relapse back easily. Okay. So I told myself, let me just like um move back to my house, get used to the loneliness and everything, oh. then I'll be able to work through it work through it yeah. i will not lie to you between first month that is january to around march or april because i just said on 16th january okay. it wasn't easy mm. remember i reached the first few weeks the hallucination yeah. your body is fighting the virus yeah, and the medication and at times your body you know it takes toll on your body okay. i would have um you know i would have at, at times i would be very sick very sweaty and everything mm. but i chose to lock myself in the house reason being because i had lost so much weight any time i would go out my neighbors would whisper people would look at me yeah. and be like wow mm-hmm. and then some of them would ask me hey suzi kwani kuliendaje siku hizi umeamua ku slim but you can tell that question is directed to something something else yeah. so i decided to lock myself the good thing the few friends i had they were there to provide you know come and check on me my yeah. family and stuff yeah. so i think maybe i'm a courageous person by nature uh-huh. so the only like the real hurdle that i had is in regards to uh-huh. fighting the medication and the you know the virus in my body but after three months okay there were lonely moments there were moments i said i wish but i kept on asking myself if i let myself down i let other people down uh-huh. Sorry to say this I have an attitude I'm a Lupian by you know <laughs> So you can imagine uh, most people do uh, not understand me yeah, exactly. because I have an attitude mm. So most of us think I can, I can vouch for that I can vouch <laughs> most for that I know Sue has an attitude uh, <laughs> So you can imagine how many haters who don't mm. know the real me mm. who would be very excited seeing me in diapers in the hospital True. So sorry to say this that also made pushed me to mm. say that i need to work hard and overcome this yes. mm. yeah so it was crazy but i thank god after the three months then i started like now coming back slowly i could eat i had no stomach issues mm. and that is it okay yeah so mm. that's a story yeah so uh the next question yes please 
after testing, mm-hmm. did you tell your then partner mm-hmm. and what was his reaction? Uh, unfortunately, uh, by the time I tested positive, we had parted ways with my partner. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm one person who believes in honesty. Mm-hmm. So when I tested positive, I had to call him and tell him, mm-hmm. like, this is my status. I have tested positive, and I think you should go and test positive. I keep on telling people honesty in a relationship is very paramount. Mm. I don't think you see those those are the things that make people living with HIV never like move. You're there stagnant because in your heart there's scenarios of unalala ukisema kai niliam maybe niambukiza plan. And I just status young. I didn't want to live with that kind of guilt. I just wanted to tell him the truth. Mm. So that if in case we are both infected mm. And he has not taken medication. He'll sort himself. Yeah. In case he's not, mm. he'll still be able to. So I told him. Uh, at first, it wasn't uh, an interesting kind of reception, but mm-hmm. at one point, he was okay with it. Though we had already moved to Kuiz, we had already parted ways, mm-hmm. and we don't talk. We don't do anything. I always tell people: people grow apart. Yeah, it yeah. is very normal. Mm. You don't need to stick to a relationship that has issues or toxic. Mm. People love other people and they are allowed and we respect that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is, how did the ARVs begin to work and when? Um, when I started the story, as I was explaining myself, um, the first three months, there is a lot that is fighting in the body. Mm. The, you know, like, there is the HIV, the virus. Mm. And then there is um, the ARVs, which are very strong. Okay. And you know, they are here as they are scaries to fight this virus. Yeah. So you can imagine, body yako iko hapo katikati, it's fighting the virus, it's fighting the medication. So for the, for the, between the first to three months, mm. nothing happens. Oh. It's, it's just the usual or the worst part of it. Mm. Like kama ulikuwa na stomach pains, they become persistent. Mm. Kama it's the diarrhea, it becomes persistent. Okay. Then at times it goes down. Then I remember there's one time, mm. by the way, had gone to Kampala in mm. between the three months. Okay. When I went to Kampala. In that state, as it, you were physically fit to take As, to, to as I said before, I, I think um, I'm a crazy person. Remember, I've been locking down myself in between the three months. Okay, but um, somebody gave me some little money, mm. like twenty thousand shillings, and told me get this something from Kampala, mm-hmm. sell it to people so that you can generate something as you are recovering. Oh yes. Yeah. But I've been locking myself, so the only time I came out, mm. nilienda Kampala, mm. nani karudi. Mm. So what I do is uh, I went to Kampala, like on a on a let's say like for for example on a Monday evening. Mm. Um, I go to the Sokor, first I go to the hotel, put my luggage, shower, go to the Sokoni, you know, I know I've been in Kampala for long, so I know, I know the places, so I just go pick, pick, pick what I want, mm-hmm. and then go back, uh, because I was weak, I couldn't have traveled immediately, mm-hmm. so that night I slept. Mm-hmm. So the scenario is, um, when I was traveling to Kampala, Nikon was by yogurt and what have you, and I didn't been a Vizuri sana mm. from Nairobi. Uh, when we reached Busia, almost Kufika Kwa Boda, I felt so cold. Okay. And I wondered, eh, what's going on? When I'm getting malaria, ma, what's happening? So we went to the border clearance, what have you. So the moment we boarded the bus, as to me, yes, idea Kampala, we are moving towards now, heading to Kampala, though it's a long journey. Mm-hmm. Like 10 minutes. Nikanta kukuwa na sweating bouts, real sweating. And then mm. it was being in, being in, I think, I can't remember the date, but it was between January to March. Maybe that's a low season. Mm. It's not like a high season, like April, mm. August, and December. Mm. Yes, so true. the bus were not full. Okay. So iyo bus, mali nilikuwa nimeka, mlango ilikuwa katikati, unlike mali, mlango wanga mbele. Mm. So, I was seated in between the driver na kwa mlango. Mm. So uyu mse alikuwa meka next, hakuwa meka next. He was seated behind. Uh-huh. So he was not seeing me. Mm. So mali ni meka, there's nobody in front, in mm. front at you or behind. Okay. And the driver cannot see me. Okay. So I can hear people talk, 
but I'm losing it completely. Mm-hmm. Body yangu imekupa strength. Mm-hmm. Nasikia joto, nasikia baridi, nasikia sijui nini. I thank God I was and I'm not saying people who are not born in a religious kind of setup are bad. Mm-hmm. But this is my belief. So I started praying. You know, I can't I can't even open my mouth. Mdomo inafanya hivi. So I started just telling God, you know what? I don't think this is my time to die. If I didn't die when I tested, I will not die today. So I kept on telling God, just please give me the strength. Mm-hmm. Let me overcome, let me overcome, let me overcome. Imagine kiu singizi kilikuja tu from nowhere. And you slept. And I slept. Wow. When I woke up four hours down the line, we were entering Kampala. Wow. But again, mm. I told myself I need to go and check myself out. Okay. The good thing about me from the word go, I've always been honest about my status. Mm. So... In Kenya, in Kambia Dakari, I asked a friend in Kampala, I need to go to a hospital. The, the nearest to where I'm sleeping because this this and this happened when I was traveling. Mm. She was very concerned. She was like, no, I'm coming. Mm. Meet me at this place. We met. Mm. Akifika, I was there. I was tested. Mm. The good thing I'd told the doctor. Everything. So I, they <laughs> gave me, when I was uh, registering at the reception, mm. I explained my problem. Okay. So the lady was able to identify the right person yeah. who could help so, me out. Okay. So he was apparently he was a doctor but a counselor as well. Oh, yeah. So he knew what tests to do. Uh-huh. Funny enough, everything was okay. So it was an issue of his or Vita's side effects. Mm. Okay. But no, after the slim, after that actually I was just given some just antibiotics, mm. painkillers, whatever, and I was okay. He told me you have no issue because I was sana. Mm. And then after the three months, then that's when I started realizing, you know, I was telling you. Mm. I had a persistent diarrhea. <laughs> let's well, not talk <laughs> about Range Rover. Let's not talk about I, Ferrari. Mm. You know, when you eat, it's not okay. When you eat, I've never, but I've never had issues with vomiting. Mm. Never. Mm. But diarrhea. driving. Mm. But after three months, mm. imagine I could eat well. It stops. Yes, it, it it doesn't stop at once, but mm. gradually. Okay. So like Nikanot is. Although before I could eat nasikia eh katumbu mm, mm. no I could eat lunch breakfast mm-hmm. and not feel it feel it kidogo when I'm eating dinner okay. then it stops uh-huh. then with between 3 now to 6 months I started mm. realizing the pains you know the two infections mm. the when you test when your immune is down mm. most people will tell you they re, they, they they get uh, this kind of Black marks. Mm. They are not wounds. They are black spots. Yes. Exactly. They are things you sleep and wake up with. With. Ama unakat with you unona zeme toke. As mm. because they are not wounds. Mm-hmm. But if there's this curious kind of a thing. You imagine you wake up and you find father zangu who's like was napenda hapa mm. and the hands. Mm. I remember one time mm. I went to Chomazon. It's Java now along Mombasa Road. Mm. Uh, just near Kabana. Mm. See me, I'm there drinking. Do I even know what's eating me up? <laughs> then this Luo men, I can hear Luo. <laughs> and like, one of them is trying to, hey, hey. Mm. And the other one is telling me, well, one you want to make a So me, I felt bad. I oh. didn't even know that is it. That is, it. Oh. That is even before. Mm. I had those bouts. Once you had them. Yeah, me, I thought, maybe I had them. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, maybe I just had them. Yeah. So, that was it. So, uh, those those black marks disappeared completely. Mm. I had, you know, when you have malaria, those wounds Cold disappeared. Co- yes, completely. Mm. My hair was very weak. Mm. But I could re- I could notice, like, it, the body was building. Okay. And I really thank God for that. But between three to six months, I started catching up. Okay. Yeah, and I thank God for that. Okay. So, anybody who will tell you your views don't work, that's a lie. <laughs> if you look at me now, mm. I lost from 105, mm. three there, at 60, and then at 52, and then I'm back to where I'm actually where I was before. Mm. Can you tell me your views don't work? They do work. They do. You've seen my hair, you're my friend. Yeah. What do you think? I have seen your hair. The height, the body. Yeah. Do you know my hair, by the yeah. way, shockingly? Mm. Even before I was sick. Mm. <laughs> but now it has even grown tall. 
Mm. Ama long. long. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine. Yeah. 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 That's, that's even nice because we had a question about the hair. Mm. So someone who asked, mm. your, your, fa- your hair fell out. Mm. How did this start and why? What roles have hair played in your hair restoration? I think you answered that. But I can just yeah. uh, capture a, a little just bit about it. Um, yeah. When you're stressed, naturally, even mm. if you don't know what's eating you up. Yeah. You know, even when the body is stressed, mm. you know, like when you're sick mm-hmm. and you don't know what it is, mm-hmm. the body, you know, it's it's automatic. Mm. The body is stressed. Mm. Then what happens? Your the hair falls out. Fall out, fall out. So, and especially with people who, who have uh, conditions, like mm. uh, like me, mm-hmm. it's, uh, when you're stressed, when the body is stressed, mm. the hair starts falling out. Okay. And then it falls out in a very funny way. It doesn't mm. just fall out. Mm. In a hairline. And it goes like this, and, it goes like this. and then you realize the volume has reduced. If you had a lot of volume, then it mm. goes like this. Mm-hmm. It becomes very thin. Mm-hmm. So those are the things you will always notice about the hair. Mm-hmm. But um, I used our personally before the ARV came in. I when I started the ARVs, I was using this Jamaican black castor oil. You'll be told this works with us, but Jamaican black castor oil. When you massage it on your hair mm-hmm. and you do this Miyadi, Miyadi products are very good. Life. Mm. Trust me. I was doing living the Miyadi and uh, move it. Mm. So every time, I would do even like thrice a week. Mm. Also, I just massage my hair, massage my scalp, kidogo, kidogo. It took time. Mm. But now when the ARV came in, you remember it's restoring me. Yeah, it's restoring. Now I no longer, you know, when you're very sick and you're almost full blown, mm. your immune system is low. Yeah. yeah. So any diseases they are just to attack. Mm. But the moment you start building your immune, mm. now you're protecting yourself from other opportunistic infections. Infection. So you're actually giving yourself room for mm. growth. Mm. So that is how I, I started. My hair started coming back. My cheeks, you know, my nice beautiful face, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So we have another question. It's about uh, eating habits. So it, it says, what did you eat to keep your energy levels up? Um, how did you boost your energy levels, considering ARVs were really had a major toll on you? Yes. Mm. So basically, when I regained back, at first I, was, I started with fruits because those, that's the only thing I would ingest. Is it specific fruit? I'm a is it season, f- seasonal fruit? Or I just would do any? like um, kiwi fruits. I know they're expensive, but very, very good. Okay. Uh, there's this melon, the other one. The, the thorn melon. Thorn melon. Mm. Thorn melon is life. Okay. I would do a lot of bananas. I would do a lot of oranges. Mm. I would do a lot of, I would mix everything, mm. you know? Mm. So I would do it as a pudding. Mm-hmm. But now there's on melons, I would just eat before. Mm. Especially what I would do when I wake up in the morning, I take a lot of water on an empty stomach. Okay. Then they do the melon, mm-hmm. thorn melon, and then they do the fruits. Mm. So, um, the fruits helps a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, well, you just need to have a combination of fruits and then a balanced diet. A balanced diet? Yes. This is comprising Eating of vegetables. Right. Yes. Mm. Kidogo starch, mm. kidogo vitamins, mm. kidogo fats. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So when you, 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 you need energy, you need everything, you need vitamins. You need. So you really need to watch what you're eating. You can't just have rice. There needs, and especially I, we are always told, and I emphasize, if you're a person living with HIV, you need to eat managu, saga, perere, those traditional kind of veggies. Okay. Those, even those many shikai, mm. and I love them. I eat them like nobody's business. So kindly, kindly stick to that. If you're living positively, mm. those the veggies are life. Mm. And I make sure kwa diet yako kuna protein kidogo, kuna vitamins, kuna minerals, kuna fats. They help you, mm. your body with. Because mm. also they are really very strong. Mm. So if, you're not, if your body is not in a backup, mm. then it wouldn't work for you. Okay. Yeah. So let me, let me ask. I'm sure most viewers 
this is the one question they're asking. Mm. You see, not all of us are all of us are blessed. There are people who cannot afford the balanced diet, Medication. cannot afford the managus. Mm. Such people, how how what can they substitute with? Um, how can they survive so they they can have the balanced diet and they can eat well and they can be able to boost their immunity? I believe uh let's say beans. Beans, okay. They are pro- under protein, right? Protein, yeah. So if you can't afford the meat, you can't afford fish, mm-hmm. you can afford, you know, those kind of things. Mm. You can substitute with any type of, type of beans. Remember, if you have beans, when mm. I'm to, it depends. Like, yeah, exactly. Me the and beans, can't take beans, we don't get along. Mm. Yeah. But for those who can get along with beans, mm. beans are very, very important. Okay. You can do beans. Mm. I believe, I mean, those traditional vegans, mm. they're easy to get. If you can say saga is very expensive, mm. I believe cherere is very cheap. Okay. Something that you can grow, it's sold at a very cheaper price. So mm. you can you can opt for beans mm-hmm. and opt for those like cherere mm. and uh, um, managu, mm. or you can do the other one. What there's the other one? What's the name? The one that uh, tastes like you're chewing chewing gum. The kunde. Kunde. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That one, and you can also do. Of course, ugali is very available. Mm. And I also tell people, people living with HIV, um, I personally, as mm. much as I look like a slay, old slay queen, <laughs> I do not say <laughs> ugali, unga ugali from the supermarket. Mm. No, from the posho meal. From right? the posho meal. Okay. And I actually get ile unga ya muhogo. And yes. mix it mm. kidogo with my unga. Unajua, it gives me that energy, energy. to sustain my body. Okay. So even if I'm leaving the house in the morning, mm. and I do, let's say, that ugali mix with managu, mm. unajua yo uh, muhogo, it mm. shikas the stomach like this. Mm. So you're good to go. If you're mm. taking your medication in the morning, you mm. you can survive throughout the day. Okay. So also, you also need, don't take this, this sifted maize meal. Mm. Go for ile traditional. The traditional one, ile maize. Exactly. Okay, let me ask another question mm-hmm. in terms of now eating habits. Uh, maybe, for example, someone had a pre-existing condition. Mm-hmm. For example, blood pressure, there's the diabetes. How how do you incorporate that, uh, those conditions with the, with the HIV and the lifestyle eating habits? How do they go together? Okay, I believe as per my understanding that okay. is, um, if it's uh, diabetes, mm-hmm. you clearly it's you avoid sugary things. So that kama unakula ugali, haukuli hizi ugali, unakula ile ya wimbi ile ya mamtama. The brown one. The brown one. Yeah. You know there are two, yeah? Mm. Una wimbi mm. and then this mamtama. Mm. So that works for you. And then especially people with diabetes, managu, managu, managu is life. It's good. It helps them a lot. Mm. So it doesn't it doesn't mean like yet lazima you eat meat. Mm. As long as like you eat that mtama or the brown ugali mm. and good greens is managu mm. and then you're eating maybe some beans and you're doing fruits mm. which are not like sugary. Mm. Though fruits which are sugary actually help. Mm. Funny enough. The mangoes, the fruit yes. of the season maybe. Yes. Mangoes. So it really helps a lot. Pineapple. For somebody who is uh, hyper- hypertensive, yeah. you need to watch your diet. Mm. As much as you're doing a balanced diet, what are your portions? Okay. Because most of hypertensive people, mm. it is weight related issues or stress related okay. issues okay so if it's weight related mm. what's your portion mm. if it's stress related i keep on telling people there's nothing big in this world mm. nothing for example you're my friend i've told you before mm. i've had uh i was sick between three years to 16 years mm. i've had three surgeries yeah. i have a tumor in the head I was stigmatized people would talk about me and everything mm. but you see i overcame you overcame eh? So there's nothing big. It is us who decide what an ibebe to even see go kwa mgongo. No. Mm. Let it go. Because at the end of the day, as much, however much you keep it on your back and you mm. feel it's too heavy, mm. will it change your situation? It won't. It's just a mental, it's basically, it's basically, uh, it's all mental. You exactly. Know? Yeah. It's mental. Let it go. Let's just go. Let, let things flow. Mm. Things work out at their right time. The next question is a bit sensitive, mm-hmm. and I told you are going to be a little bit sensitive. It's okay. So, HIV and sex. Is there anything else to add? HIV and sex. Can you rephrase your question? 
Can you have sex when you're HIV positive and on what terms? Definitely. Maybe if your partner is HIV and uh, you're HIV. But or on, on some cases, mm -hmm. your partner is HIV and maybe you don't, you're not HIV. They're called discordant couples. Yeah, sure. How, H, nini sex and HIV, how do they go together? As in, what are the measures? What, what on what terms? Oh, how do you go about well, it? Well, you can still have sex. As I said before, nothing changes. It's just your blood status and you, how you take precautions. And um, I'm positive, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't stop me from being happy. Yeah, it's true. Having sex is not a sin. It's being happy, right? See the way you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say yeah. So, I'll say yes. It's um, we huh? still have sex. Uh -huh. People still have sex, but or my issue is when people do not know when it's okay to have sex. Is there a certain time to have sex when you're HIV certain positive? Certain conditions. Conditions, okay. It's the conditions. If your viral load is at low, and the other person's viral load is at high, you need to use a condom. The moment you decide to have sex without a condom and one of your partners who's positive, the viral load is high, you're prone to be infected with other strains. What people don't know, first we have HIV-1, mm -hmm. we have HIV-2. Mm -hmm. Mostly in Africa we have HIV-1. Mm -hmm. But again, there are subtypes. There's yeah, the A, subtype. there's AE, there's whatever, there's whatever. So many subtypes. Those are what we call strains. Strains. Most people do not understand that the moment they expose themselves to people who their viral load is low, they infect themselves with other strains. What does that do to you? It fails your medication. Yeah, you switch to another and another. And at times it fails terribly and you go to die. When all the medication is done, you mm. switch to ile unalipia, which is mm. very expensive. What mm. if you can't afford it? It's true. Your good is dead, right? Mm -hmm. So I hate the fact that people think because they are positive, mm -hmm. it's a leeway to sleep without a condom. Let's not even talk about strings. Do you know they are STIs or do you call STD, STIs? STDs and STIs. No, STDs is before. STI is, is when you're positive, right? So you can get you can get an STD you when can you're still, positive. But the worst, it's the good thing about STDs. Mm -hmm. You can treat them. Okay. STIs mm -hmm. are permanent, just like HIV. STIs are awards, mm. Mm. You treat sure. them for life. Mm. They will never get in or out happies. of your system. Or happies, that's mm. all, yeah. Will never get out of your system. So you'll have two things you're fighting. Or three even. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that's not even funny. Mm. So why is it that people are so ignorant that the moment they turn positive, they realize we have to give up? Kwani? They, they even come to your inbox. They try to cut you. You refuse. You know, there's this notion because you're positive, you should date anyone. So if somebody approaches you and you refuse, Nima insults. And in my head, I'm like, who told you that my dignity stops the moment I test positive? It doesn't. I am still Susan Wagimu Meta. My dignity counts. Marlin Nikonimeji plays kwa shelf here supermarket. Still stands. <laughs> Yes, mm. my value still stands. Okay. So I will not stoop for anything. Sorry to say, I will not. I will not. So, so let's stop this notion of because I'm HIV positive, I should settle for less. I should settle for anything. No, something else, because uh, of time, let's narrow down to things. Kindly date somebody who's mentally stable. You don't want a te toxic, not even negative. Mm -hmm. I want, I want, kindly allow me to talk about this. Toxicity is there in marriages where people are positive, people are negative. Can we stop being toxic? Because the moment you're toxic, you're infecting the other person with toxicity. Watch I know people will castigate me for this. Ukiona watu wanawananga sometimes, si kitu ingine. Toxicity. Toxicity. You're too toxic. Toxic. No, no, you not push your toxicity to the other partner. Maka na feel enough is enough. What are you and kufe? Can we just learn to handle things, to approach things? You understand? Yeah. yeah. First, before you think of attacking the other partner, what is your mental state of mind? Mm. Can we stop this bullshit of being irrational, making decisions when? Uh, 
you just want to make decisions can you sit down think about it if i make this decision how will it impact positively or negative if the positive is the way to go forward go about it if the negative you understand my point yeah, too, too much okay. whether positive make one toxicity mingi ndio na people are killing each other mm. people are feeling like i'm done me, by the way i know people will cast, cast get me for this we always we always talk about women being battered women this Are we talking about men who commit suicide and keep quiet about it? No, we don't. Are we talking about men who go through issues in relationships and they don't say anything? On that topic of depression and HIV, I really wanted us next week maybe we can discuss uh, on terms in terms of depression, HIV because I feel depression is a little bit more if that is would have me in your show next week. Um definitely I would okay. still want you to interview me you're my be- you're one of my best bestest friends okay but I would really want us to talk it in a big kind of scope uh we can expound First, on it first when you talk about depression we're not going to talk about depression in regards to only the HIV status HIV and both negative uh, both depression are... in whether you're single mm-hmm. whether you're married whether you're a man Or you're a woman mm. because there's so many challenges affecting men and women and marriages and relationships and we're ignoring and we're thinking it's okay and then depression comes in when there's no way utakuwa depressed when there is no mm. a toxic partner so our major issue related to depression will be toxic partner so so yeah we'll see where it takes us sure so the last question mm-hmm. And I'm sure very many people are asking this your beauty tips how is it that she looks this nice you know i mean what's what is she doing that we're not doing you know she's positive some of us are not we are, we are negative and i'm looking But flyer we, than you right exactly you see know, no people want to know, know you know what know. what does she use as in what her what's her secret mm. how does she maintain this look you know most people when you tell them i'm hiv positive they're like i wear chakuto to enjoy you can tell us kidogo as in what's your secret I will not lie. I'll not be like those six you meet in Nairobi streets they're like me kunya maji mingi sana ndio maana my face. No. I naturally have a good face. I've never had issues with my skin uh-huh. since I was born. Uh-huh. But again, I use Jergens healing Jergens. J E R G E N S Jergens healing lotion. Uh-huh. It's very good it heals the skin. Uh-huh. Um I do a lot of uh, baby oil by mm-hmm. Johnson's. Uh-huh. And I do because of what I'm taking my medication I do a lot of water. water. A lot of water. Mhm. And then of course RVs zinafanya zinaonesha na zinafanya watu wako rainbow. You know what I'm saying? Some people are, well, it does not react to you, you see. I think but I told you mm-hmm. reaction how your medication works for you. Mm-hmm. It starts with your mind mm-hmm. and your status of the heart. Mm-hmm. Cause my dear, ukiwa umekataa kujikubali, hata ukunywa dawa aje, utakuanga tu hapo. But look at me, nilijikubali nikajisahau na nikaendelea kunywa dawa. So everybody around me actually forgot I was sick mm. and embraced me. So we live a normal life like nothing has. Changed. So the only time my life changes is between 8:58 when my alarm clicks mm-hmm. to 9 when I'm supposed to take my medication. Okay. And still I don't take it as it's like it's a big thing, a burden. But it's take a it life like, it's a life choice. Yeah. This is how I make my life move on. Mm-hmm. You understand my point through. Mhm. So it's all about what what do you reflect? What do you project? That's why I go back when I said you are what you project if you're miserable mm. if you're bitter those are the things you reflect on the outside mm. so this 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 medication only works when your uh, when your state of mind is very perfect mm. is works in the right and i want to tell hiv people this and i'm speaking to you on camera you test positive and you tend to think oops it's the end of the world that is a lie it's never the end of the world and do not look at your pocket do not think because who is making it because most probably her pocket is very loaded no it's ata ukiwa na pesa gani and you cannot accept your status there is no way you'll ever move on so kindly fast your heart please stop bitterness with whoever infected you ata kama alikufanyia nini i believe there's always a blessing in disguise accept your status mm-hmm. 
please do not be bitter do not infect other people in in terms of at don't want to die alone that's bullshit because again unajua nani unalala nai no and even i'm a christian how how would you even stand before god and you killed people intentionally does it even make sense hell no so kindly if you turn hiv positive live right eat healthy be happy accept accept let's stop this notion like hiv is the end of life it's not we are normal people living healthy living the right way and being responsible responsibility starts with you be responsible of your sexual responsibility kindly be. if you feel like you don't want to open to your partner then don't have sex I keep on telling people this. I don't think I'm being arrogant or rational, but think about this. If you don't this part, tell this partner you're sleeping with that you're HIV positive and by mistake the CD bus, will you ever be able to come into terms by whatever will happen? Kindly do not be there just to be there. Let's, let's show this negative people out there that we are responsible good people so that they can actually love us there's something else i was thinking of talking about i'll take like two or three minutes how did my faith was it shaken yes was it shaken in terms of religion yes is... i'll tell people this mm -hmm. and i'll tell you this first i'm a pastor's daughter for your information People don't. People think this is the biggest challenge that I've had in life. You've not known me for so long. So from when I was three years to when I was sixteen years, you've seen this, the, the scars. Yeah, scars yeah. I had a tumor for sixteen years. I've had three surgeries, three major. The moment it was removed, it could multiply and become something big. So like you'd what? walk people and stigmatize. So for me, stigma is not the first time. Mm -hmm. I've been through that before. So you can imagine after all that, at, at 19 years, umetolewa imeisha, you're supposed to start your life. Mm. And then at Kidogo, 10 years plus, you turn positive. positive. If I was somebody else, I would be cursing God. But mm. I'm not going to curse God, Zuleka. Mm. I am a believer of everything happens for a reason. For a reason. Every person comes to your life for a reason mm -hmm. and a purpose. season. And some of these things happen is a blessing in this case. Okay. Shockingly, shockingly, mm. I have never been this happy. Divine connections are happening like never before. Amen. So for me, I do not regret what I am today. Because God knew I would do something to change people's lives and he would change my life through this. Yeah, exactly. And then something else, it mm -hmm. changed my attitude towards humanity. Being a European, by initiation, wherever, well. <laughs> as this arrogant chick, I loved myself to be, and I was, by the way, and you know, hmm. but funny enough, <laughs> it made me look at people from a very different angle. Okay. It made me understand humanity. If I see somebody in distress, I will not sit there and look. Because I, the moment I was sick, almost to my deathbed, I realized, it's in vanity. Mm. You can't be gone when you think you have everything. Mm. So it has helped me understand humanity, help people, encourage people. And the reason I started this channel, I've never told you this as my friend, not to earn anything. If it comes as a surplus, it's okay. But to change people's lives. There are people outside there who feel they are done, but they need to know, you can go through my channel, you can see my number, you can see my email address, my Facebook, my YouTube, talk to me. I'm here to help people work.